Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Showing Up to Your Life podcast and YouTube channel. My name is Art Burns, and I am super excited to talk to you today about a new practice. Well, not really a new practice, an old practice that I personally have not done in quite some time, and I haven't talked about it in longer than that. But it's a practice that is so powerful, okay? What I'm talking about is journaling. And I want to talk to you about journaling today because I want to tell you uh, some of the benefits that I received from it. I want to tell you some of the benefits that, you know, have been studied of journalism in, in you know, scientific experiments and research and this kind of thing. But I also want to talk about what journaling does for you. And hopefully, I'm going to inspire you to pick up your pen and, and journal for even just a few minutes every day. Okay, now, please understand, I, uh, you know, until pretty recently, like the last six months or so, sometime during COVID, I don't know, nine months, something like that, maybe a year. But until that point, I was journaling literally every single day. In fact, I just happened to... Um just happened to pull these out of uh, the closet. I was looking for something. And I saw all of these journals. So for all of you on the uh, podcast who aren't watching the video right now, I am showing two, four, six, seven uh, full size eight and a half, eleven books that are literally, I mean, crammed. Like there's not a page available in these books. I don't think anyway. Yeah, no, not a page available in any of these books because they're completely filled. Because that's how much journaling I used to do. And I want to tell you how much I loved it. I mean, it was amazing. Now, why did I love it? Why is it amazing? Let me tell you something. Before I get into that, okay, before I, you know, kind of tell you my opinion, I want to share with you what was written in this wonderful book called Search Inside Yourself. Okay, this is written by Chade Meng Tan. This is the program at Google. Okay, it's a mindfulness program at Google, hence the, the cute pun name, right? Search Inside Yourself. It's pretty clever. You got to hand it to them over there at Google. Um, this is a wonderful book. It really is. I mean, it's it's maybe a little bit sort of business-y, you know, and when I first got into, when I was first uh, decided to become a coach, my, my main focus was people in business because that's where I had been and I figured I could help people that way. I no longer really do that kind of work. I mean, sometimes I do, but it's not like I'm avoiding it, but it's just not my sort of focus now. But at the time it was, so that way this very business centric, you know, it's, it's basically like emotional intelligence for profit, you know, if you will, right? Like it's about, you know, becoming mindful to be a better, you know, worker of some kind, you know, better executive of whatever kind. So there's definitely some issues I have with that at this point in my journey, but it's still a great book with some great, uh, great tips, great practices, great philosophy, really great. And it's very relatable too. So it's, it's kind of uh, written in a very conversational tone, right? But let me tell you what, um, so uh, how much journaling do you have to do before you experience a measurable change? Quoting an article that appeared on March 2nd, 2009 on the very short list science website. The quote is, 20 years ago, University of Texas psychologist James Pennebaker concluded that students who wrote about their most meaningful personal experiences for 15 minutes a day, several days in a row, felt better, had healthier blood work, and got higher grades in school. But a new study from the University of Missouri shows that a few minutes of writing will also suffice. Researchers asked 49 college students, which is a pretty small sample size, to be honest, but asked 40, 49 college students to take two minutes on two consecutive days and write about something they found to be emotionally significant. The participants registered immediate improvement in mood and performed better on standardized measures of psycho psycho physiological well-being. Sorry. Um, an extended inward look isn't necessary, the study concludes. Merely broaching the topic on one day and briefly exploring it the next is enough to put things in perspective. And that's really what, what you know, one of the, the main sort of, you know, functions of, <clears throat> of journaling is, right, is to, is to help you to sort of organize stuff, right? Now, a lot of times when we write, right, if we're writing an email or we're writing a letter, I mean, if anybody writes letters anymore and postcards and stuff like this, right, we're, we're writing, and even if you're writing, um, you know, creatively or, or writing journalistically, right, you are writing to convey information to someone else, 
right? And there's a certain there's a, a certain set of of skills and a certain set of a process that that is involved with that is necessary for conveying you know ideas and information through the act of writing, right? Journaling is not that at all. Okay, you're literally writing to yourself. So all you're doing is, you know, a lot of times people will call it a brain dump. I don't know if I love that term, but I get it and and it fits for sure. Um, I like to look at it as just unfiltered thoughts. Right. And, and so, so, so often what happens, right. As we, you know, most of the people who I work with, right. You know, and myself too, right. Like, like a, a huge part of the, of the issue that we experience in our lives, right. In terms of, you know, not being happy or being stressed or, or, or being, you know, overwhelmed with anger or overwhelmed with other emotions like shame or guilt or grief or these kind of things, right? You know, these are the kinds of things that, that bring people to mindfulness, right? And, and one of the main sources for so many of these things, right, is the thoughts that go on, right? Especially when it comes to stress, right? Stress is something that is the stress response in our body is there to save us from a life-threatening experience, right? But as I've said here umpteen times here, 77% of American adults experience stress on a chronic basis. That means that 77% of us, almost eight out of every 10 American adults, feel stress in their body once a day, every single day, right? Maybe not even once a day, but but feel it day after day after day, more days than not, right? <clears throat> and so you can't tell me that eight out of 10 Americans are experiencing life-threatening experiences every single day, right? There's just not that many mountain lions in America, right? There's not, you know, sure, maybe you live near alligators or something like that, it's possible you'll have a, a life-threatening situation here and there in your life, but most people who live in America, right, live in homes that are safe. We we have police that that keep that help to keep us safe, right? We have a whole organized uh, society, you know, structure that that helps to provide safety and resources, right? We don't have to find our own water. We don't have to kill our own food. We don't have to, you know, figure out how to dispose of our own waste, right? We all have services for this. So we live in a very safe society in, in you know, in a sort of relationship to the, the way society has been or, or in, you know, in contrast to no society, right? It's like a band, like a, a tribe of, of hunter gatherers kind of thing, right? That's not how most of, most of us live. Most of us live in a very safe society. We have safe cars. We have safe uh, appliances. You know, everything is relatively safe. Yet, we have almost eight out of 10 people who are experiencing stress, right? So what's the deal there, right? Because stress is only supposed to help us to survive physical danger. <laughs> so why do we have eight people out of 10 who are experiencing stress in this really safe society? Well, the reason is the thoughts that go on in our mind right? When we start thinking about bills that are due, or we start thinking about projects at work, and we start thinking about relationship issues or money issues or, or you know, health issues, right? So many people, right? I have, I have many, many clients who experience things like this, right? You get a, a pain in your side, right? And so, you know, now it's just, it's just a feeling, right? But your mind doesn't accept that it's just a feeling, not automatically, not without training, right? And instead, what your mind is going to do is going to create a narrative, right? It's going to create a story. And that story, right, more often than not, is going to go to someplace that is scary, right? So you feel this stitch in your side of some sort, and all of a sudden, you, you know, your, your mind goes to a place where it's not just a, a passing thing that we can just kind of wait and see what happens in the next couple hours. No, you're thinking your appendix burst, and you're going to go to the emergency room, right? Because of the way the story happens, right? And it happens very quickly, okay? And so, so those thoughts that create those stories, right? They, they just cycle inside our mind over and over and over and over, and they become more and more powerful as they do. And they become more, they grip us and they take us and they, they send us to the emergency room. Like literally, that's what happens, right? Like we, we literally feel like we have to get up, get in our car and go to get help because of the thoughts in our mind. 
right? So what journaling does, one of the things that journaling does, not necessarily the most important thing, but, but one of the very important things is that journaling allows us to you know, instead of having these thoughts kind of cycle around in our mind, it allows us to let them go, okay? It goes from your head to your hand to your page, right? There was a great visual at one point where, you know, like, you know, there was a visual where the the figure, you know, it was like a stick figure drawing where the figure was all black and the and the journal was white. And, and as the, per, you know, the three or four frames or whatever, you saw that that as the person was writing in the journal, the person became white and the and the book became shadowed and gray and you know and, and black, right? So that's what it is, right? You're taking all of that stuff that's that's causing you, you know, negative emotions, causing you, you know, unclear, you know, thinking. It's causing you to your attention to jump all over the place, right? You're taking all of those things that cause all of that and you're letting it out of your body. And you're and and by doing that, right, it's very similar to talk therapy in that sense, right, except that you don't have the feedback of a therapist, right? But, but we all, I mean, many people know that, that just talking about our issues is hugely beneficial, right? And as, as these studies show, it's not just in terms of like how you feel, right? You're actually, your body is, is processing things differently, and the reason for that is that you're allowing your body to get into a place of homeostasis, right? You're, you're the stress-inducing thoughts, right? You're allowing them to, to get out of your mind. And, and in the place of those, now you have clarity and you have homeostasis, calm nervous system, right? But there's something else that, that, that is, is really, really impactful, with with journaling and, and this is one of the things that i have found you know I've, I've gotten back into journaling i don't have one of those books anymore like i know i have one that's half filled somewhere and that's not why these are out because i was looking for it the other day for right now i'm just kind of using my uh my little notebook that my daughter bought me and just creating journal entries in here you know um but but one of the things that i found in doing the journaling is that it allows me to get in touch with my authenticity. That's really the way that I would say it, right? So, so let me see if I can explain this in a way that really makes sense to you because it's one of those things where I, I you know, and I'll journal about this and I'll be able to clarify it better, right? Because that's what happens, right? But, but when I write about myself, Right. And, and I'm writing about myself in a very safe, you know, we're talking about safety. Right. And this is also true about a therapist. Right. Like when you're in a therapist's office. Right. You know that not even the law. Right. The law actually protects what you say there. Like you literally that person is bound by law to not tell anyone else what you're saying. Right. So it's a very safe place. Right. Journaling is exactly that, too. Right. It's a very safe place for us right? Because nobody else wants to read your journal, right? Even if you leave it out, right? Nobody's that interested, right? And even if they are, you can hide it, right? You can very easily keep a book in a place that's safe that nobody else looks at, right? And so, so the point that I'm making with that, right, is that when we, when we know that it's a safe place and when we give ourselves that, that safety to really unload, right, then we don't have to filter anything, right? We, we really allow ourselves to say, you know, to write down even some, some very tender and even, you know, maybe potentially embarrassing or potentially, um, you know, scary stuff, right? We, we, we allow ourselves to process this stuff, right? In a way that we can't do with our spouses or our friends or our business associates, right? Like the only other thing that, that comes close to this would be a therapy kind of thing, right? A therapy uh, arrangement, a, a circumstance, a, a situation, whatever you want to call it, right? Because otherwise, if, if I'm telling my, you know, if I'm bleeding out my heart to somebody, you know, I can't really do that. I can't do it fully, you know, because, you know, there's certain things like, Ugh, I don't know, I'm going to get embarrassed if this person knows about that thing. You know, I don't want to tell them about it. I can't say that. Oh, what about that? No way can I tell them about that, right? But I can tell it to my book, right? It's safe here to tell it to my book. And so so what happens is as I, 
as I allow myself to really share those those deepest, darkest things in my in me, right? Like it's sharing your soul in a certain way, right? And so, so as I do that day after day, as I get into this into this place for you know a few minutes every day, I allow myself to get in touch with my authenticity, right? And now, authenticity is something that is very, very overlooked in our society, right? The the I mean, of course, it's always positive to be real, right? To be a real person, to be authentic and all that stuff. And that, it's also, it's a, it's a good buzzword, I guess you could say, right? But what does, you know, practically, as a practical matter, right? What does authenticity really mean, right? I recently uh, uh, watched a few interviews with uh, Gabor Mate, Dr. Gabor Mate, along with his film that's that's just coming out. They just did like a preview. I think it's going to be available starting today, perhaps. Worth buying it, worth watching it. Please do. It's called the the Wisdom of Trauma. Dr. Gabor Mate is, uh, you know, he's getting on in age now, and he's been doing this for I don't know 40, 50 years now. He's he's put so much information, so much great work out in the world that it's just it's it's I. I I have such a debt to this man, you know, in my heart. Like he, he is such an inspiration to me, you know. Um, you should read his story. It's really incredible. Uh, but anyway, one of the things that he said during one of these interviews, or perhaps it was even in the film, I think he mentioned in the film too, is that authenticity, right, is is connected to and really is kind of synonymous with your gut feeling, right? Your instinct, your intuition, right? And so, so for, for most of us, myself for sure, way back when, right, we can easily in our lives, we can lose touch with that authenticity, right? We can, we, and we do, right? It's, it's kind of by design almost, right? Like, like as we're growing up, right? When we do something that feels intuitive to us, right? But our parents say, no, 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 you're not supposed to do that right? Well, now what we've done is we've detached from that authenticity, right? We, we've detached from that realness of ourselves, right? And every time that happens, little bit by little bit by little bit by little bit, what happens is we, we wind up becoming this persona, right? This, this, we put on a mask, right? This is what I think the world needs from me, right? Now, in and of itself, we can, con- we can conceive of how that is, is not a positive thing for us, right? We can see that, right? That's an easy thing to sort of grasp, right? But when we put it into the context of what that means to how we process the world, right? Like your instinct or your intuition, I should say, pardon me, um, your gut feeling, right, is, is something that is really, I mean, first of all, it's unique to you, right, which is... There's only one of you, right? There's only one you in this entire universe, right? And so, so it, you know, not only, right, is, is that important that there's only one of you, right? But that intuition that you have is your own built-in sort of guidance system, you know, it's it's that thing that allows you to go through your life, you know, allowing you to say, okay, yeah, I feel this. This feels good. I want to, uh, you know, I want to pull myself towards this. Or no, that feels not good. And I don't care how many people tell me that I should do this or that, that it's the right thing to do. It feels wrong. So I'm not going to do that, right? We don't live that way. Right. What we do is we live the way that, okay, you know, the person who pays me, the person who's raised me, the person who I married, the person who looks up to me as as a father, right? Whatever I think these people want for me, that's what I'm going to give them. No matter what it is that I really feel, that's causing so much confusion in so many of us, right? So much confusion. And, and it's, it's, again, it's detaching us from the thing that we really are right? And, and it's causing a ton of stress. It's, it's in itself, it is a piece of trauma, 
right? Or it's an, uh, an experience of trauma, right? And of course, that was the whole name of this film that, that Dr. Gabor Mate made is The Wisdom of Trauma, right? Which is, which is a brilliant concept in and of itself, right? Because we always think of trauma as something horrible, but actually there is wisdom in the trauma that we experience, right? If we're there to look at it. Right. And so this authenticity is, again, something that that is so, you know, it, it's literally what, you know, Dr. Gabor Mate says that when we're when we're growing up, there's two things that are the most important. Right. Attachment, meaning having a, a you know, a, a caregiver who is truly attached to us, making eye contact, you know, having prosody in the voice and, and, and a warmth and a, you know, caring like that attachment, right, is, is one of the most important things for a young child. The other is authenticity. And that's the doctor, right? Dr. Mate, who's been doing this for, again, 50 years probably, maybe more. And so, so what happens is when, when we're writing just to ourselves, we realize how much of those masks, how many of those masks we're wearing. And we realize that, you know, we come to realize through the storytelling of our own past or, or our present or whatever it is we're writing about, and we're going to get to that in a second, but, but the, you know, as we're writing about ourselves and all the things that we're going through or have gone through, then we start to see where we have taken up those masks and we start to see see where we're, we're ignoring our own intuition, all right? And, and once we see it, now it's just a question of just getting back to it. And it's, and it's always there for you. It didn't go anywhere, right? Your instinct is, or your intuition, pardon me, I keep <laughs> conflating those two words, your intuition is, has always been there. You can't get rid of it even if you want to, right? But you can't ignore it, and it can atrophy in a certain way, right? But as soon as you start paying attention to it again, the muscle tone will come back and you will start to feel that in that intuition again. All right. And it's very, very important for you. In addition to, again, the emotional intelligence that comes from it, the, uh, the emotional wellness that comes from it. I mean, I feel so good after writing for three minutes in my journal. Okay. I mean, I feel like good, good, right? Like you just got out of a therapy session. Like, wow, whew, I feel like I can do this now, <laughs> you know, like that kind of feeling, right? And all it takes is a few minutes every day. So how do you do journaling? Okay. Let's go over some very simple. There's thousands of ways to journal, right? And if you look and Amazon will give you, you know, 10,000 different choices of pre-printed journals and all that kind of stuff. And feel free, if that's what you feel like you want to do, go for it, okay? However, all that's really required is a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. Don't type it though. Okay, it's really important to write. You know, there's a, there's something that happens with the um, as you're you're you know when you're you're taking this energy from your your brain into your writing energy, right? Like that is there's a, there's a thing with that. Okay, and and there's also something that's very uh, you know um, uh, from a science standpoint, right? There's something about the negotiation of the spatial relationship as you're writing that that helps you to process things in a different way, right? Than it does. Just just typing, right? So I know we all love our phones, we love our computers, but really do this old school, okay? Write it by hand. Second thing, set a timer, okay? Like I always tell people with meditation, right? There are days where you do a meditation and, uh, you know, 10 seconds in, you know, or, or after the timer goes off, after three minutes, you feel like that was like two seconds, like it just went so quickly, right? But there's other times where, you know, after 10 or 15 seconds, you're peeking at the timer to see if you set it because you, you're sure that it's been 10 minutes that you've been sitting here, right? That's the way it goes. And that's, and, and that's the same thing with, with journaling is that, you know, we, you know, the, the, the way our mind works, the way our bodies work, you know, it's not just a, a we're not robots, right? So, so, you know, today you're going to feel a certain way. You're going to process things a certain way. You're going to have a certain sort of relationship to temporally, you know, the, the time passage, right? Say, you know, tomorrow, completely different. So, so setting a timer is very, very helpful. Okay. Now, when you set the timer, and this is very important. Okay. Again, we're looking for unfiltered, unedited, un, 
examined writing here. Okay, you can read it after, of course. That's a great idea, but not even that necessary, by honestly, which is interesting. But but it's very important, right? If we stop and we think, okay, what am I going to write about here? What did I want to say about this? Now you're editing. Now you're filtering. And that's not the way it works. Okay, so, so what you want to do is pen to the paper, set the timer or, or push the start button on the timer. And until that timer sounds, you are writing constantly. Do not take your pen off the paper, right? Except to, to, for the next word, of course, right? But, but the, the idea here is that even if you can't think of what to write, just write, I can't think of what to write. And just keep writing until something comes up. Okay. Something will come up. I promise you. Okay. If it doesn't happen today, it'll happen tomorrow. Don't worry about that. Okay. But it's important. Okay. Do not sit there and think what you want to write. Just let it flow. And that's one of the beauties of it, right? Because sometimes you'll start writing about one thing and, you know, by the end of the three minutes, you're writing about something completely different. <laughs> and it just, and that's what happens when we just let it flow. And that's where we find ourselves in the writing. Okay. So very important, okay? Now, there are many different sort of, um, you know, goals or, or, or methods or, or sort of even uh, modalities, if you will, of journaling, right? Uh, some people like to journal to just, you know, kind of, um, you know, commemorate things to, to just sort of, you know, as a, you know, almost like a captain's log, right? Some people like to do that. Uh, some people, uh, another way of journaling is there's gratitude journaling, which I talk about here, but that's a little different. So let's not Let's keep gratitude off to the side for now. Um, there's, you know, in uh, journaling for emotional intelligence, which is more of what we're doing here. Uh, there's many different ways, right? And so, so I invite you to kind of contemplate some of these. But really, if you were going to take my advice, if I was coaching you, I would say just do something very simple, okay? You can start with a set of prompts, and I will send you a set of prompts if you need them, okay? I have a whole bunch of them written out already. And and what I used to like to do when I first got into journaling, and it's only for like the first few weeks, right? But when I first got into it, what I did was I wrote out a bunch of prompts, like 10 or 12 prompts, and I wrote them on little pieces of paper, and I folded those pieces of paper up, and I kept a little bowl on my desk, right? And I put all those pieces of paper in the bowl. And so when it was time to journal... Right When I had my book out, my pen out, my timer ready to go, I would pick one of the pieces of paper out. Whatever that prompt was, that was I started writing from there. Okay. And so prompts can be very simple, right? Like, you know, like something I did well today, <laughs> dot, 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 right? And just write about that. Something I did poorly today, dot, 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 you know? Thing, you know, something that makes me happy, dot, dot, dot. Uh, life is dot, dot, dot. I am dot, 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 right? Just to give you a jumping off point, right? Because again, a lot of times the, the most struggle that we have is looking at that blank page, right? And that's why starting with a prompt, again, just for the first few weeks, gets you into a rhythm of just like, okay, I'm just, this is the prompt I picked out. I don't have any choice. I'm, I can't put it back. That's the rule. I got to write what this is. And so I'm just going to start writing. And, and even if I don't have anything to write, I'm just going, I don't know what to write today. I don't know what life is. I don't know what makes me happy today. Nothing's making me happy today. And, and you know, nothing's making me happy today because this happened and that happened. And now all of a sudden I'm talking about something. And now all of a sudden I'm getting into it. And now I'm realizing I'm, I'm, I'm processing things and that's how it works. All right. So if you would like some prompts, just hit me up. Okay, I'd be happy to send them to you. Okay, um, what I, you know, eventually what happened with me is that it, it kind of evolved from the prompts. I just started writing about, you know, I would write in the morning about the day before. Okay, and just, you know, whatever was alive from that day, if there was something that, that was calling me from that day that I did something really awesome, or if there was something calling me that I did something really horrible or somewhere in between, right, I would just pick one thing from the day before and just write about that, right, emotionally, right? And so, so that's it, folks. And if you're, you know, again, I mean, don't take my advice. Listen to the search inside yourself, folks. I mean, the, the science is there, right? It's, it's very, very clear. And again, all it requires is about two or three minutes a day. And now if you set your timer for three minutes, but you're, you're like on fire and you're writing, you don't want to stop, then don't stop. I mean, there's no, please just keep going. I don't care if you write 10 pages, you know, it's all good, right? As long as you follow that format of just really letting it flow. 
All right, if you have any questions about this, this is important. So I really want to hear from you if you have any questions about this. All right. And if you're willing to try it, I promise you after a couple of weeks, you're going to just, you know, I am so glad that I've gotten back into it. I'm so glad. And that's why I did this episode today because it's just been, it's been for about five or six days now that I've been doing it every day. And I'm just, you know, and there were some things alive for me. That's why I came back to it because there were a few things alive for me. I mean, I talk here a lot about, or at least once in a while, about some issues from my childhood. And, and they've been alive for me. I'm going through some stuff with my parents and, you know, they've got some health issues. So we're kind of taking stock in things. And, and there's, there's, you know, a lot of pain in there. There's a lot of confusion. And that's really what it is, right? There's, there's a lot of confusion. And that confusion is what causes the discomfort and causes the, the negative emotions that come from it. But those discomforts and those negative emotions impact my here and now right? When my daughter comes in and I'm in this emotional place, I'm not there for her, right? And so, so it's been really, really helpful for me to, to shed some of this, this weight and just really, you know, really just process it. And in the processing, I'm becoming more emotionally balanced and more sort of happy and, and letting it go a little bit because I can see it, right? And once you can see it, it's no longer scary for you. All right. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. So I appreciate you. Uh, as always, there's a link in the description to book a call with me if you choose to, but you can also just email me back for those prompts. I will send them to you right away. Happy to do that. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I wish you well and happy journaling. I'll talk to you soon.